our colleague from Portugal, Mr. Anacleto, Jose Manuel, President of Lusitan Center of Cultural Unity in Portugal. Jose Manuel Anacleto was born in Lisbon, Portugal, graduated from the Faculty of Law of the Catholic University, works as a lawyer in the ministry, has been studying theosophy since 1979. Mr. Anacleto is editor of the journal Biosophy, president of the cultural center Lusitana, where for the first time three volumes of text by H.P. Blavatsky in the full Portuguese version of the commentaries of the secret doctrine were published in Portuguese. Other books uh, of Mr. Jose Anacleta, uh, in particular reprint of Esoteric Buddhism by Senet and the Secret Books of Blavatsky by David Tregel. Also of about 40 books and a preface to the Portuguese edition of the Voice of, si Voice of Silence. Commissioner and author of 24 panels of the exhibition dedicated to Helena Blavatsky, which took place in Lisbon in May 2018, and these documents were later reproduced in Brazil. Organizer and lecturer of several congresses, author of hundreds of lectures and uh, hundreds of articles in theosophy, esoteric philosophy, spiritual traditions, Anacleto Jose Manuel, President of Lusitanian Center for Cultural Unity, Portugal, while listening to you and to your report for head aspects of vital force. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm very happy to participate in this event, and I thank you with all my heart. Uh, to the organizers to inviting me to speak here today. My report is perhaps a little longer than it should be, so let's begin uh, right now. The title of this lecture is FOAT, which, as stated by Elena Blavatsky, is one of the most if not the most important character in esoteric cosmogony, the secret doctrine, volume one, page 109. Foat is a Mongolian term, also used in certain fringes of Tibet. It has its correlate in the eros of Greek mythology, in the Apan Napat, son of the waters of the Vedas and of the Zendavesta, in Daivi Prakriti of the Hindu, of some Hindu philosophical schools, particularly of Sankhya, and in Kepra and tomb of ancient Egypt. I also think that some formulations about the Holy Spirit in the Christian Trinity are equivalent to Fawat. And finally, it has a link with one of the names of the Buddha. In the Secret Doctrine, Elena Blavatsky said that Fawat is one thing in the yet and manifested universe and another in the phenomenal and cosmic world. In the unmanifested, there is, before the formation of an objective cosmos, for what is latent and co-eternal with Parabrahman and Mula Prakriti. Parabrahman, para meaning beyond, supreme, and Brahman meaning cosmic all being, is the absolute consciousness or the absolute unconsciousness of anything in particular. Mula Prakriti, i.e. Mula root, Prakriti, nature, substance, matter, is the precosmic root of universal substance, the chaotic nature before the organization of the cosmos. Absolute motion 
a food force of union between consciousness and substance. For I told Sparabraman and Israel Mula Prakriti absolutely united. Absolute motion in absoluteness for what unites without, without needing to unite, for nothing is it separate, in the same way as it moves without moving. But for what being the ceaseless, destructive, and formative power, which simultaneously unites and separates, binds or unbinds, for what being the creative desire, which in the cosmic realm is kama eros, that impels towards manifestation from the bosom of the unlimited all in itself and manifested. Periodically, it separates the prototype of father and mother, of thought and matter, of intracosmic subjectivity and objectivity, Parabrahman and Mula Prakriti, which as such are simultaneously father-mother, thought, result of thought, subject, object. Then, Thought became, becomes the divine ray of inexhaustible creative potency, which instills the absolute divine thought, Parabrahman, in the bosom of the proto mother, Mula Prakriti. He transforms himself from sun into spouse, the process that will give rise to the construction of the cosmos began with the awakening of the so far latent first Logos. At first, sleeping in the bosom of Mula Prakriti is then her son. As soon as he awakens, he becomes her spouse and the occult father, gushing out the universal energy called Shekinah in the Kabbalah and Daivi Prakriti in the Bhagavad Gita. The first Logos serves only as a transmitting center of force, the light of the Logos, whose source is Parabrahman. And the latter, having appeared on the one hand as a native center of consciousness, and on the other as Mula Prakriti, or Pradana, acts as the one energy through the Logos. This energy, the light of the Logos, or Parabrahman's verbal, is Fowat or Daivi Prakriti. The duality spirit matter, father, mother, Purusha Prakriti, begins then to be established. The second Logos, is precisely explaining this way in the secret doctrine. Spirit, matter, life, the spirit of the universe, Purusha and Prakriti. We proceed to quote the secret doctrine by, of Elena Blavatsky, illustrating what she said earlier and paving the way for what will follow. Just as precosmic ideation is the root of all ideation, of all individual consciousness, so precosmic substance is the substratum of matter in the various grades of its differentiation. Hence, it will be apparent that the contrast of these two aspects of the absolute is essential to the existence of the manifested universe. Apart from cosmic substance, cosmic ideation could not manifest as individual consciousness, since it is only through a vehicle, an upadi, of matter that consciousness swells up as I am I, a physical basis being necessary to focus array 
of the universal mind at a certain stage of complexity. Again, apart from cosmic ideation, cosmic substance would remain an empty abstraction, abstraction, and no emergence of consciousness could ensue. The manifested universe, therefore, is pervaded by duality, which is the very essence of its existence as manifestation. But just as the opposite poles of subject and object, spirit and matter, are but aspects of the one unity in which they are synthesized, synthesized. so in the manifested universe, there is that which links spirit to matter, subject to object. The clear assumption of the duality of or differentiation between ideation and substance marks the transition from the second logos to the third logos, to stages of cosmic manifestation. In the poem of the secret doctrine, we can read about the third logos, cosmic ideation, mahat or intelligence, the universal world soul, the cosmic noumenon of matter, the basis of the intelligent operations in and of nature. In other words, we have on the one hand, the design, the architecture of the universe, the cosmic ideation, and on the other hand, the substance where the work, according to the ideas contained in the cosmic mind, is going to be realized. The substance being, therefore, the basis of the intelligent operations in and of nature that Elena Petrovna spoke about. From the nominal standpoint, as an ideal cause, the substance is mental, according to the hermetic postulate, the universe is mental. Once such duality exists, that something which unites ideation to substance, spirit to matter, subject to object, is indeed necessary, just as is the dynamism that enables the link between a sculptor's idea and the stone where the work is to be executed. It is by means of that intelligent dynamism that the substance is worked and molded. This something, says the secret doctrine, is called Fowat. It is the bridge by which the ideas existing in the divine thought are impressed on cosmic substance as the laws, laws of nature. Fowat is thus the dynamic energy of cosmic ideation, or regarded from the other side, it is the intelligent medium, the guiding power of all manifestation, the fog divine transmitted and made manifest through the Dian Shoans, the architects of the visible world. It is the mysterious link between mind and matter the animating principle electrifying every atom into life. And now something very important. Since the third logos is identified with the cosmic mind, Mahat or Mahabuddhi, it should be explained that the ontological substance of the divine mind is in fact all the divine spiritual intelligences. Yes, the divine mind is those spiritual intelligences or gods, including the human mon monads, monads, and not the mind of a particular being, like some kind of a personal god. 
Similarly, the Logos or the Muge is not an individual being, except if taken in the sense of the highest hierarchy of the system or cosmos, i.e., the highest vertus of a legend of a vast ensemble of creative intelligences or gods. More strictly, it expresses an abstract collectivity of Buddhas, of Dhyani Shoans, of Dhyani Buddhas, of Satanari hierarchies of creative powers. Therefore, for what is the dynamism of the divine mind and its substance being the set of spiritual intelligences or divine sparks. It is through them and by mobilizing them that for what impresses the divine design, the divine archetypes on the cosmic substance, for what is thereby the builder of the builders. On the other hand, for what vivifying and combining the atoms into ever more complex aggregates or forms leads to the unfolding of the planes and subplanes of the universal substance, which from the Adi Prakriti or primordial cosmic substance by successive steps or densification of or materialization will progress to the heavy and comparatively slow physical matter. As HPB again elucidated, for what, running along the seven principles of Akasha, acts upon manifested substance or the one element, and by differentiating it into various centers of energy, sets in motion the law of cosmic evolution, which, in obedience to the ideation of the universal mind, brings into existence all the various states of being in the manifested solar system. On all planes, Fuat is always the mediator, the electrical transmitter, between the ideative mind and matter. In 1888, Madame Blavatsky also wrote, some faint idea of the nature of Fuat may be gathered from the Appalachian cosmic electricity sometimes applied to it. But to the commonly known properties of electricity must in this case be added others, including intelligence. It is of interest to note that modern science has come to the conclusion that all celebration and brain activity are attended by electrical phenomena. And we may add today, it is certainly interesting to note what the same science states about the importance of electricity in the emergence of life and about the current electronic means of transmission of image, sound, information, knowledge. Esoteric science considers that Fuat is the great universal force of which its sons brothers are differentiations. Sons and brothers, because Fuat is the synthesis of all, namely motion, sound, heat, light, cohesion, electricity, and magnetism. It is for what the kinkens matter to activity and evolution. It is the bearer of life. Meanwhile, for what is not only the electrovital power builder of great cosmos, where it imprints the divine thought. In true, the theosophical teachings assert that there are as many foats as there are worlds, and each varies in power and degree of expression. The individual foats make up a universal and collective foat, 
the aspect entity of the one and absolute non-entity, which is the absolute non-beingness. Beingness. So for what exists in each individual being, namely in a human being. And in the human being, we have for what uniting the pure spirit, the inseparable ray of the absolute with the soul both constituting the human monad, just as in nature, for what is the first link between the unconditioned and the manifester, or rather, it is the very detonator of manifestation. It is for what that, in the Akashic substance, delimits the auric egg of each human being, it is also a foatic energy that sutratman, sutratman is made up, the thread of life that runs through the different levels of human expression. Foatic is all the electrical and nervous energy that stems from our desire and which motivates the action. Exoteric science correlates foat with the fourth principle, kama, the desire, the animal soul, although in other points of view is correlated with the life force. In the, sec in the secret doctrine, we also read, as in the oldest Grecian cosmogony, differing widely from the later mythology, <laughs> Eros is the third person in the primeval trinity, Chaos, Gea, Eros, answering to the Kabbalistic Ein Sof, the boundless soul, Shekinah, and the ancient of days, or the Holy Ghost. In the latter is that occult, electric, vital power, which under the will of the creative Logos, unites and brings together all forms, giving them the first impulse, which becomes in time law. But in the unmanifest universe, for what is no more this than Eros is the later brilliant wing, Cupid or love. For what has not to do with cosmos yet, since cosmos is not born, and the gods still sleep in the bosom of father, mother. He is an abstract philosophical idea. He produces nothing yet by himself. He is simply that potential creative power <coughs> in virtue of whose action, the noumenon of all future phenomena divides, so to speak, but to reunite in the mystic supersensus act and emit the creative ray. When the divine sun breaks forth, then for what becomes the propelling force, the active power which causes the one to become two and free on the cosmic plane of manifestation. The triple one differentiates into the many, and then for what is transformed into that uh, vital force which brings together the elemental atoms and makes them aggregate and combine. We find an echo of this primeval teaching in early Greek mythology. Erebus and Nux are born out of chaos and under the action of Eros give birth in return to Ether and Emra the light of the superior and the light of the inferior or terrestrial regions. Darkness generates light. See in the Puranas, Brahma's will or desire to create. The brilliant suggestion of HPB take us on a little tour of Greek mythology thereby bringing us closer to a more Western tradition. 
Greek mythology has undergone several mutations over the centuries. But the idea of the chaos before all things has remained, has always remained within it. In Ovid's fortunate expression, chaos is the personification of the primordial void prior to creation when order has not yet been imposed on the elements of the world. In Egyptian and Greek cosmogony, chaos is a powerful energy of the formless and unordained world, which encircles the creation or cosmos. It existed before the universe was built and coexists with the formal world, enveloping it like an immense and inexhaustible reserve Господин, of energies in which forms will dissolve at the end of time. As we have already seen in, the one, in one of the presentations of Я Greek mythology, Gaia and Eros were, with chaos, the other Anacleta, elements. Thank you very much, first organizer. So we, we were supposed okay. to speak for 20 minutes. I'm sorry. Okay. I was about to, to end it, but never mind. Uh, Mr. Anacleta, thank you so much uh, for the scientific facts you gathered uh, for the uh, point that for her that's the most important notion in cosmogony, uh, cosmogony of uh, theosophy. So, applause from Russian public, from theosophy scientists. So, thank you so much for points you mentioned. For her, this very important, and this topic is uh, very varied. And of course, we understand that it's impossible to mention everything in 20 minutes. So that is why we will wait you further in our seminars and we hope that you can tell us a lot about Fohad and many other uh, parts of the philosophical doctrine. Uh, thank you so much. See you.